we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. With you, a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus said, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. If you are my friends, if you do what I command you, I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I have called you friends because I have told you everything I have heard from my father. It was not you who chose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. This I command you, love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of all my priest friends and Father Boda, the celebrant today, I offer the family my sympathy and great sorrow to Richard and Robert and Lucy, Frank's wife, nieces Lisa and Donna, four great nephews and one great niece. Enrico was no ordinary man, no ordinary Christian, no ordinary priest, no ordinary professor, no ordinary musician and playwright. He was a devoted family man, a pianist and organist of concert quality an ordained priest of the class of 1963, a professor of language and literature, 
a most faithful and generous member of St. Francis Church here, a highly respected organist and director of music at the Kingston Congregational Church, a composer, a composer of organ symphonies and Broadway musicals, a composer of three religious hymns that are sung and recited daily all over the world by users of the Roman breviary, hymns like Romans 8, for to those who love God, all things work out for good. Hymns like Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. And this I ask, that you love one another as I have loved you. These hymns are sung every hour before the throne of God, but for you and me, Enrico was an ordinary man, one with us in humble friendship and service, as well as close friends with his family, his bishop companions, and world-famous professors. His humble and most productive life of 84 years was God's generous gift to us and to our world. When I first considered delivering this eulogy, I thought I would expand on the eight Beatitudes of Matthew's Gospel. Yes, he was poor in spirit, gentle and pure of heart, loving and generous even to his enemies. And then I realized that Rico had already amplified the Lord's Beatitudes in his music and writings. Then I thought of his love of the prophet Isaiah, especially his sentence that's often used in the Roman breviary that he recited daily in the divine office. This is the man I approve of, writes God the one who stands in awe before my word. Indeed, Rico was in awe of the gift of God's word in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And then from a glance at our first Bible reading today, it was obvious that the Gazzilli family knew more about Isaiah than I did. So I decided that I would follow Ronald Knox's use of St. Paul's exhortation from his second letter to the Corinthians, both as beginning and conclusion for the life story of Enrico Gazzilli. In all things, St. Paul wrote, let us exhibit ourselves as the ministers of God. By evil and by good report, as deceivers yet true, as unknown yet known, as dying and behold we live, as chastised and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as needy yet enriching many, as having nothing and possessing all things. As Father Knox concluded, the servant of God can be recognized first by the sufferings that he undergoes, and next by the perfection of his own character, and lastly by the misunderstanding that he encounters throughout life. In other words, we who follow the gospel will be treated much as our master was treated, but as St. Paul insisted, we who believe that Jesus was sent by the Father and raised from the dead we will be loved by the Father, and the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead will also raise your mortal bodies. I propose to consider Rico's life in three segments. First, his young life that I saw in the mid-1950s when I was teaching college Latin and English at Our Lady of Providence Seminary in Warwick and doing some music work there for divine liturgy. Rico played organ for our religious gatherings and received his BA from the college with honors in 1959, 
when Bishop McVitie sent him to study at the North American College in Rome. I remember visiting him there when he introduced me to the Bishop Rector. Rico was shocked that I shook the Bishop's hand instead of kissing his ring. <laughs> he graduated from there with high honors in 1963, was ordained to the priesthood and assigned to parish duties at St. Michael's Harrisville and then to two Italian parishes in Providence. In 1966, he was appointed to the college seminary to teach Italian and to work out some music programs. Over the next 10 years, he wrote the lyrics and music for those famous three hymns, performed on piano and organ, and studied at Brown University in comparative literature, and taught world literature at our seminary. In 1971, Brown sent him to Harvard University to see if there's anything more he needed to learn. <laughs> Harvard sent word back they had nothing to offer him. <laughs> and when his doctoral thesis was finished the next year, Harvard published it within a month. It was called Circles Without Center, Paths to the Discovery and Creation of the Self in Modern Literature. It reviewed the literary works of Pirandello, Paul Valery, Samuel Beckett, William Faulkner, James Joyce, André Guide, Georgia Julie, Louis Borgia, and Robe Guillet. It begins with a touch of Shakespeare and ends with the final passage from darkness to light in Jesus Christ, the divine word or logos. I, say, I cite one sentence from the last chapter. The word is not only the mediator of creation, he is also the revealer or the narrator. I doubt if there is another study that unites the modern wisdom of the world literature in six countries with the divine wisdom of John's gospel. And what I noticed since then is that his professors that he worked with at Brown are still his great friends. And when he was completing his great study of literature, he was also teaching our seminarians in Warwick. In reviewing the graduating class year uh, books of those years, I noticed that he was voted the most admired priest professor by the class of 1968 and the class of 1974. Many of those classes performed in his direction and production of Broadway musicals at the seminary, such as Man for All Seasons, Royal Hunt of the Sun, Man of La Mancha, and his own drama of Abelard and Eloise called then Calamities, now entitled Rage of the Heart. The next period in his life was both successful and tragic. In the late 70s, he had the great honor to be called to Rome again to be Dean of Students and Studies at the North American College in Rome, a position of great honor. He did some study of music there in Rome and made great friends with students who became bishops and cardinals. And after seven years there, he returned to Providence and secured a position in the English Department of Providence College, where I was then teaching. Five or six years later, he requested a leave of absence from the college so he might oversee the production of Rage of the Heart in London. Apparently, the Gucci family was to back it financially on the condition that their daughter would perform as Eloise. El yes, Providence College granted his request for one year and then for two years, but refused to grant the third year. He then lost his position there. At the end of that third year, some weeks before the opening of his great musical drama, Rage of the Heart, the director was killed in an automobile accident and the show never opened. 
Enrico returned to Rhode Island and apparently decided not to accept the various offerings offered by the Diocese of Providence. He did then some teaching at the University of Rhode Island and settled in Wakefield, becoming a parishioner of this parish, St. Francis. When Father Nick Smith came here as pastor in 1997, Rico offered his musical talents to renew the parish. Father Nick remarked to me that Rico and his mother were regulars here at the Saturday evening parish mass. On Sundays, Rico had the job as organist and musical director at the Kingston Congregational Church. Rico helped Father Smith generously though, during his 14 years here with all things musical, developing the new organ, new choir master, and organist. And during this time, Rico became active in local productions of his old and new musical productions and became director of the South County Singers. I remember going here in Wakefield to his direction of his Paris musical about the Fitzgeralds, the smart set. But he also suffered during this time the death of his mother and his brother Frank another great teacher and powerhouse here in Narragansett. Father Smith remembers Rico's musical concerts at St. Francis Church every Palm Sunday to set the tone for Holy Week liturgies. For the next 24 years, Rico directed those Palm Sunday concerts here in the church, including this past March. Often he would perform some of his organ uh, symphonies that generally featured a solo rendition of the Magnificat, Mother Mary's Hymn of Thanksgiving. For the last five years, he would include performance of one of my own religious compositions, much as he often did at the Kingston Congregational Church. This past Palm Sunday, Besides the jubilant requiem mass of Gabriel Faure, who's in Paradisum, we will hear today, he performed my musical setting of Richard Crashaw's poem called The Shepherds Sing at the Nativity of the God-Man, a piece for full chorus and organ. Rico loved the poem's line to Jesus, welcome all wonders in one sight. The final period includes his last 15 years in Wakefield, a period when I got to know Rico on a more intimate basis. When in Wakefield, I would visit him every second or third Friday afternoon at his home at the Commons and talk music and literature. Often he would take a new composition of mine and transfer it from the written page to notes on his computer, a computer which also would perform what was written. I must have about six hours of music on that computer. At six o'clock, we would then have dinner with one of his priest friends at Trattoria Romano. I tried to telephone Rico after Easter this year but never was able to make the connection. Friends told me he began to look and even talk differently. I assumed that he had premonitions of his death. Perhaps that's why he performed this year on Palm Sunday, a repeat performance of Foray's Happy Requiem. We often discuss Foray's insistence that the Christian funeral service should be a happy one much after the tr tradition of J.S. Bach, especially his hymn, Come a Suicide, Come Sweet Death. Or much like John Donne's sonnet, Death Be Not Proud. What he felt, why he felt so quickly, I will never know, but I think he knew what was happening. He took such great care of his body with exercise every morning in the commons and careful choice of food and drink. He led a very disciplined life. 
And whatever the reason for his sudden death, he lived always with his bags packed for his union with his master, Jesus Christ, and with Holy Mary, Mother of the Church. May his classmates and all of us here be so blessed. Seminarians in the 60s and 70s at Our Lady of Providence College knew him for his strong direction of Broadway plays. After the Thomas More tragedy, they would refer to Enrico as the man for all seasons. Indeed, he was. And after his production of Man of La Mancha, they would look on him as Don Quixote as they sang his version of the Lord's Beatitudes to dream the impossible dream, to fight the unbeatable foe, to hear with unbearable sorrow, to run where the brave not do not dare not go, to right the unrightable wrong, to love pure and chaste from afar, to try when your arms are too weary to reach the unreachable star. Yes, as for Quixote, the trumpets of glory now call Enrico to ride. And as Quixote concluded, and whenever I ride, ever staunch at my side, my squire and my lady shall be onward to glory. Or as St. Paul concluded, let us exhibit ourselves as ministers of God, as dying, and behold, we live, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as needy, yet enriching many, as having nothing, yet possessing all things. May Rico rest in joyful peace with his parents and brother Frank, and with all the angels and saints. Amen. Amen. So let us stand now and present our needs to the Lord. Brothers and sisters, our Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church. Confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Our, res our response to each petition will be, Lord, hear our prayer. In baptism, Enrico Garzilli received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our brother Enrico was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him now to the halls of the heavenly banquet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of the Garzilli family have gone before us and await us in the kingdom. May God grant them an everlasting home with his Son, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all who have been forgotten on earth and whose faith is known to you alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Enrico seek comfort and consolation at this time of loss. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in the kingdom through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated, and Lisa and Donna will bring up the bread and wine for the Eucharist.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Enrico, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, Robert, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Enrico Garzilli, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Remember also his brother Frank, his parents Francesco, and what's her name? What's her name? Yes, thank you. From this world to yourself, grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our other brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Francis of Assisi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer one another some sign of Christ's peace. Thank you. Peace be with you. Peace bless you. God bless you. Thank you. In a few moments, Monsignor Thiru and I will distribute communion from the head of the aisle. If you are not going to receive communion, either because you're not a Roman Catholic or you're, you don't go, it's not your custom to go or there's some other reason, please feel welcome to come forward for a blessing. Just cross your arms and we'll give you a blessing. Or if you prefer to stay in your seat, if you're more comfortable doing that, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, just I'd ask everyone, please, to come. Uh, through the middle aisle and go back by the sides. And we'll come down to the front here for the people who can't come forward. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us stand and pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Enrico may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Our brother Enrico has fallen asleep in Christ. Confident in our hope of eternal life, let us commend him to the loving mercy of our Father and let our prayers go with him. He was adopted as God's son in baptism and was nourished at the table of the Lord. May he now inherit the promise of eternal life and take his place at the table of God's children in heaven. Let us pray also on our own behalf that we who now mourn and are saddened may one day go forth with our brother to meet the Lord of life when he appears in glory.
Before the closing prayer, just a word of comfort for the family. I hope that the presence of so many people here is a, a comfort to you. I pray not only for Enrico, but also for his parents, Francesco and Filomena, for his brother Frank, for all the members of the Gazzilli and Perilla families. Uh, I hope that legacy can remain of faith, of love of learning, and of hard work. And to be a baker is very hard work, and I hope that that legacy of uh, devotion to duty will remain with you for a long time to come. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Enrico in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Rico in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother Rico forever, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us now take our brother to his place of rest.